Hello, friends. I think I've warned some of you that the first two slides will be a quiz. So are you prepared? Let's go, Steve. Let's have a show of hands for those of you familiar with the Civilian Conservation Corps. Okay, maybe 50% of you, that's about right for this nationwide program that ran from 1933 to 1942 and expended $1 billion employing 3 million young men for $30 a month on projects in our national and state parks. Another show of hands for those of you familiar with Mission 66. Okay, one of you, apparently. You're supporting my theory that this is a forgotten era. This nationwide effort ran from 1956 to 1966 with an expenditure of $1.33 billion. It began in Yellowstone, who had projections for more than 1.7 million visitors by 1970. This reflected the growth in all our national parks. They have been underfunded since the Civilian Conservation Corps with funds diverted to World War II. The parks were in deplorable condition and understaffed, yet we're now being heavily visited by young families in automobiles. This Yellowstone image was used to convince President Eisenhower that the parks needed money and staffing to combat the problem in our parks, which National Park Service Director Conrad Wirth labeled being loved to death. He was on a mission to rectify the damage by 1966, the Park Service's 50th birthday. And what federal funding bill is complete without a feast of bison and elk? Here is Worth in 1950, February 1956 with friends celebrating after he presented the new presidentially endorsed Mission 66 program to congressmen and members of the American Automobile Association. A major force of Mission 66 was conservation of natural resources such as Yellowstone's Grand Canyon. They had been allowed to have buildings as close as one eighth of a mile to the rim. Um, and so Yellowstone's 1935 master plan, tabled since its creation, included moving construction away from the canyon rims. Worth selected Yellowstone's canyon for this first Mission 66 project because it moved visitor services into a separate village away from the rim and the red circle. And the Yellowstone Park Company's contract was expiring at the end of December 1955 and because it was the first national park. The new village was a one-stop shopping area for visitor services. Displayed around this horseshoe-shaped parking lot, it included the visitor center, Photoshop, general store, Canyon Village Lodge. Dorms and cabins were built between this plaza and the woods. The government built the lot and the visitor center, and the concessioners built all the commercial buildings. The Elstone Park Company, who had been spending $300,000 per year since the war, took out a $3 million loan in March 1956 and started construction of the 320-foot-long lodge building at Wright and the registration building that May. They ultimately spent $1.5 million on the lodge alone at $5.6 million in total. At this groundbreaking, Worth stated, this occasion will remain forever as one of the truly great and memorable moments of my lifetime. As we break ground for the new Canyon Village, I can actually feel and see that Mission 66 is at last underway. This new era promises, promises to be the most rewarding in the Park Service's history. A major international architectural firm from LA, Welton Beckett and Associates, designed Canyon Village. When hired by the Yellowstone Park Company, Welton Beckett was 53 and in his professional prime. He had designed large department stores, shopping centers, and Hilton hotels. He was concurrently working on design and construction of what would become the iconic mid-century Capitol Records building, which cost $2 million to build. This firm brochure includes a partial listing of office building clients, Lockheed, Prudential, Shell Oil, Dell Webb, you get the picture. Yellowstone's Frank Matson reviewed this early design, stating that the proportion of the roof, which is one continuous plane and exposed to view, is somewhat of a shock. Regarding the recreation building at the right rear, he said, do others also see the broken back and the poise for flight which has already been expressed? He preferred buildings that appeared more grounded. The day before groundbreaking, the total construction cost estimate increased from $3 million to $4.5 million. The recreation hall was removed from the project, and the number of income-generating cabins was increased from 300 to 512 units. To distance this visitor experience from motels outside the park, Worth instituted a nomenclature of lodge and cabins, which were prefabricated in shops in Gardner. 
facilitating winter construction of the 12 foot wide building parts, which were then transported on flatbed trucks during the evenings and loaded onto site built structures during the day. Mud and snow complicated all of the construction. The architects were told to disregard precedents and be imaginative in considering all problems. Beckett made great use of 92 foot long Lulam beams and lots of glass, creating an expansive volume that opened to the exterior. This was modern architecture, in contrast to the old faithful ends of the past. Welton introduced a Moreau-like luminescent back bar countered with traditional materials, stone, wood, and colorful chairs. In 1964, this bar was relocated and the back bar discarded to allow more room for dining. Use considerations such as these have led to multiple changes of the lot to the lodge over the years. Welton also designed colorful line art in homage to the American Indian. The colors here, orange, green, blue, yellow, permeated throughout the furniture, the few decorated walls, and the light fixtures. They reflected the canyon's colors and were in contrast to the natural backdrop of the wood ceilings and walls. By 1985, all the wood floors of the lounge and the bar area had been carpeted. The light fixtures painted white, the furniture replaced with drab brown pieces, and the once transparent screen walls at left were painted over. The original beams, sloped ceiling, glazing, and volume remain as a starting point for renovating back to its original character. Yellowstone is now restoring the original Mission 66 components, the woodblock flooring, the light fixtures, the transparent screen walls, and the fireplace, bringing in colorful mid-century style furniture. The rejuvenated Canyon Village Lodge will open in May 2017, a visual reminder of the country's dreams 50 years ago.